Hey guys, today I'm going to show you my six favorite color correcting hacks in Final Cut Pro. Let's dive right in. All right, hack number one is isolating certain colors in your frame and making color adjustments on them using a color mask. Let me show you how to do that. We're gonna take this shot of these beets and I really want to brighten up and saturate the color of the beets and make them even more vibrant without messing around with like the background or especially this green here. I really just wanna focus on the purple of the beets. So let's go on over to this color board here in our inspector, drop down the color board, and then up here you get this little icon, let's select that, and we're gonna select add color mask. And then I'm gonna take my color picker and I'm just gonna grab these beats as best I can, grab as much of them as I can without grabbing so much of the background. So I think that's gonna be as far as we can go. And then start making adjustments here in our color board. Let's dial up the saturation on the mids and the lights and the darks. Let's head on over to exposure and brighten up the lights and darken down the darks. And then let's head down here and play with the softness of our mask. And you can see how the color correction creeps up on more and more of the beats. And to me, that looks pretty good. Let's do a before and after. Okay, the next hack involves a plugin. It's the only plugin in this video, I promise, but it is the best value. It's $20 and it's called White Balance Plugin 2 from fcpeffects.com. I downloaded this plugin ages ago and I still use it all the time. All the editors in my office use it as well. It is such a great plugin. I just wanna show it to you. You just drag and drop it like any other clip and here it is in your inspector. It has a white balance selector. So you can select something white and balance using that. Then there is just so much control in here. You've got brightness, contrast, temperature, tone. You can customize the shadows, midtones, highlights, adjust the saturation. You can even do a lift if you're looking for something really high key. I mean, this thing has it all. Typically what I do is I start with the blacks and I pump up my blacks a little bit because that does affect your saturation. And then I might come up in here and brighten it up a little bit. I do these two settings, brightness and blacks over contrast, because with contrast, you're brightening the brights and darkening the darks at the same level at the same time. And I don't think it's enough control. You could achieve the same effect with more customizability using brightness and blacks. And then I might pump up the saturation just a hair. And what I really love about this plugin that I use a lot is the blue or orange color temperature. I use this so much because look at what it does. If I go down to blue, to me, this looks like an early brunch, right? The color temperature looks like it's in the early morning. But if I dial it more orange, suddenly it looks like it's late in the day and to me this looks like a happy hour so we get the best of both worlds with this plugin this plugin's amazing there's so many settings it's just such a great value i'm going to link to it in the description box below for you guys My next hack for you is how to color correct a range of colors in a shot without affecting everything else. So, you know, with the Beats video, you saw that I could grab that purple and really make it more vibrant. But what about a shot like this, where there's so many different reds? You know, I always tell people to avoid red when we're shooting because it bleeds. It can get like really fluorescent looking. Do you see this hat? and all these different red tones everywhere in this shot, even her nail polish, just looks really saturated to me. And I couldn't quite fix this easily with the color picker because there are so many different tones of red. Let me show you what I would do here. I already color corrected a little bit with my white balance plugin. Now I'm gonna go up to my inspector here 
and select hue saturation curves. And this is the line we wanna be focused on, hue versus saturation. What I'm going to do is click along the color bar here in the reds, and I'm gonna dial down the saturation of the reds. And it looks like everything else is dropping, right? But if I make more corrections along the board, I can keep everything else saturated and lower the saturation on just those reds. So they're not really bleeding like they were. Let me show you the difference. And look, no one's skin tone or anything is really affected. It's just those reds. All right, my next hack is also built right into Final Cut Pro. It is the balance color button in Final Cut. To me, it's the equivalent of the Google I Feel Lucky button. You ever play that game on Google? It's a really fast way to color correct a shot like this one. So look at this shot, it looks fine. Could probably use a little saturation, but it might be a little warm in tone. Here is where you find the balance color button. Drop down, hit balance color and it instantly looks less yellow and it just looks right. Everybody's skin tone, everything looks right. And so with just one click of a button, these colors look really balanced out. My next hack for you is how to make a gloomy gray sky look blue and sunny. In this shot here, there was just this one gray, gloomy cloud behind this house. So if you look, the bushes and everything else looks really sunny. And then this gray cloud would not go away and we were running out of time. So we just shot it gray and I knew I could fix it in post. So what I'm going to do first and foremost is double up this shot. I'm gonna hit option, select my clip and drag it up. If you need some Final Cut shortcuts like this one, I'm going to link to a video I already did right here. You should definitely check that out. Let's head on over to our color inspector. I'm gonna select the color board again. Again, we're going to add a color mask and we're gonna select this gray sky and we're gonna head on over to the color tab. We're gonna hit master and I'm gonna make that look Nice and blue. We can up the exposure a little bit. Dial up that softness. Now what you might notice though, is that the changes I'm making here in the sky are affecting the clip down below. Look at what's happening to this guy's shirt. You see here how funky it looks if I turn off the effect. You can see that I am affecting his shirt. That is not what I want. So the next thing I'm going to do, and this is why we doubled up the clip, is we're going to head down over to masks. We're gonna do a draw mask, drag that on there. Head back on over to our inspector tab, select the draw mask, and now I get this little pen icon. And what I'm going to do is just mask out everything but the sky. Hey guys, while I'm doing this masking, I just wanna remind you to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss a future upload. Okay, and what you can see here is that the sky looks gray again. What we need to do is invert the mask over here and there you go. Now we've color corrected the sky, but his shirt stays perfect. And my last hack for you guys actually applies to logos. If you have a logo that is multiple colors and you want it to just be white or black, or you have a black logo and you wanna make it white, this is a really simple fix. You can't even hardly see our logo because it's black on black right here. But what I'm going to do is head on over to color in my effects tab. We're gonna to go to colorize, drag and drop. And then we wanna remap the blacks to white. Remap the whites to white, make sure it's nice, everything's white. And then dial up the intensity 
This is a great hack if you need a solid color version of a client logo and you're sitting around waiting for them to send it to you because they can't find the right file or they have to contact their graphic designer. You can do that so simple here in Final Cut. You don't have to bring it into Illustrator or Photoshop. This is also a great hack. You guys, I hope you learned something new today. If you did, let me know in the comments. Give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again.